Hello again, everyone. It is I, Conway Fitzgerald. Welcome back. Uh, this is the latest episode of The Modern Immortals, Episode 3, The Designer. I'm so happy to share this episode with you folks. It was a lot of work, and as I got towards the end zone and I saw it, I tell you, man, I was like, Ugh exhausted, but it's so worth it. I have a fantastic cast, a whole bunch of uh, new actors in the troupe who are just fabulous. And uh, they uh, also, some of our friends from the UK helped us uh, create the uh, House of Commons scene, which I'm very excited to share with you folks. That said, I'd like to make a special thank you out there to both Jeff Tullin, who is one of our fantastic actors in this episode, as well as Mitch Goodall. Mitch was kind enough to take the time to chat with me and make sure that uh, the depiction of the House of Commons scene um, was realistic enough for, uh, for this purpose. Uh, as it turned out, I had reached out on social media to see if anybody could check me, and Mitch happened to write questions to the Prime Minister. Like, that was his gig once. So... Having him as a resource was invaluable to helping create the, uh, the reality of the scene. Of course, before I forget, please everyone, uh, you know, it, I think I did a, a calculation in my head. I think an episode like this, I know I put one out right now about once every month, but it's more than a hundred hours of work. And I offer this to you all for free. There is absolutely no charge. Uh, my actors donate their time and their outstanding performances. So please, if you really like having b free, brand new audio drama on YouTube, be sure to click those social medias, the, the, the like button, and you gotta subscribe if you wanna know when these things come out. And also, you know, like, write anything, you know, a few exclamation points in the comments, because that helps the algorithm and uh, tricks uh, the YouTube gods into expanding our audience even more, which is really the best thing I think we can do for these awesome actors. They really deserve it. Now, I should warn, my listeners that there is some language and also some subject matter in this episode which may be a little heavy for some folks so uh viewer discretion is advised so now on with the show and from the karana we emerge to find our sukshma until we are ready to carry on beyond the thula beyond ourselves, always being, always being, carry on. Eva, are you home? And from the Karana we emerge oh. to find our suit. Eva, darling, it smells like rubbish in here. Until we are ready to carry on. What are you doing there on the floor? What is this mess? The third stage, the thriller, beyond ourselves. Have you slept at all? Always be. My word, Ava. Always be. You are an absolute wreck. Carry on. What, what you do to your air? We need to get some air in this room. What? Why? Why would you? Ava, you haven't been yourself since they made you all young again. Have you even been taking your medication? You haven't touched this all weekend, have you? Ava, I'm going to call Dr. Fakori. You are not well. You've ruined it! Why would you do that? Fashion week is days away and you've ruined it! Ruined what? Ava, your buyers have already pre-ordered. Carry on into the millions. What are you worried about? They all love the new look. Why are you acting so panicked? Like you've never presented before. Ah! Ah! Away with you! Skidder laughing! Get out! Go away from me, I don't want you here! Uh, how can you say such a thing? Ava, you need help. <laughs> Go away. I need every second to repair this now. I had it. I don't need your distractions. You are not 
being fair, Ava. People who love each other must always respect each other as well, no matter the reason. <laughs> love you? I don't even know you. I don't know why you're here. You've ruined it. Ah! Go away! There isn't much time. How could you say such a thing? I I knew there was something wrong. I gotta call Dr. Fakori. You need help, Ava. <laughs> uh, had your wish. Just go. Go, you bloody nerf. <laughs> <laughs> and from the Karana we emerge to find our Sukshma until we are ready to carry on beyond our Stula, beyond ourselves, always being, always being, must carry on, carry on. <laughs> All illusion. This is all just an illusion. I must carry on, carry on. No turning back. Carry on. Ah! A simple design. Concentric circles, an endless, expanding universe beyond time and space, wheels within wheels, skewed only by the desire of the human mind to retrace the floating stardust for another chance to unravel its vast, enigmatic mysteries. Could restoring the fire of a young mind realize the quest for knowing this truth of existence? To unlock the true meaning of everything? Or must we all simply carry on? The Modern Immortals by Conway Fitzgerald Starring Sally Swift Janelle Baptiste Nikki Brown Marcus Ivy Deronte West Matthew Van Wettering Rhiannon McAfee Steve Fisher David Robbins Jeff Tallinn Kareem Cronfley Bethany Murray Perdita Lawton Michael Webler Conway Fitzgerald Robert Finch and Julia Eve Inside the office of Broderick Murphy, editor-in-chief of the Washington Post, not only are you going to pull that story, but I want a total retraction, including an apology from those reporters. Well, I don't see that happening, sir. Well, you'll see a lawsuit happening then. Tell them, Chad. Mr. Murphy, my client clearly is upset because these reporters did not respect his privacy. And even after being told not to, they pursued his wife for comments without his knowledge or consent. His wife needs his consent? Attorney Dennis, we simply asked Mrs. Lewis for a comment. There was nothing untoward about it. Now fuck that! You went into my house when I wasn't there, asking Cammy questions about things she doesn't understand. 
all just to make me look bad and try to tear down my life. Tear us down. Mr. Lewis, you have every right to not like what was said or not to want your wife's feelings made public. But she did agree to the interview. I don't give a fuck. I got this, RJ. Look, Mr. Murphy, I'm preparing a slap suit in excess of $50 million if we can't come to a resolution here. I don't understand what you expect us to resolve. You could start by firing those two reporters. Then I want a public apology. Look, if we can't agree that a mistake was made by the Washington Post for printing this slanderous story, then we will be forced to proceed to litigation. I understand, Attorney Dennis. Do what you must. We stand by our reporting. Amateurs. They think this is my first rodeo? I'm worried about Cami. I mean, really, did you hear that guy? Can you imagine what he's telling her? Look, you two are paid to investigate and report. What happens as a result of that should not inhibit the facts as presented or the quoting of sources when authorized. We certainly aren't going to censor ourselves to make anyone happy. What do we do about Waddington? We've heard nothing back from their media office since we requested the interview with Vanderfloos. Murph, they're hiding something. I know it. That Dr. Fillmore just shut me down like he knew we were onto him and we would uncover whatever it is they're hiding. Did you guys hear about the designer? McIntyre? Oh my god. What happened? Tonight, Metropolitan Police are at the scene of the luxury high-rise apartments of Chelsea Pontem's Tower. The peace and quiet of this exclusive London neighbourhood was shattered this evening when police arrived at the scene discovering the body of world-famous fashion designer Ava McIntyre. Preliminary reports are that Miss McIntyre fell to her death from the 18th floor patio. Onlookers were horrified. The police have issued this statement. Our investigation is ongoing. At this stage it appears to have been a suicide, as Miss McIntyre was alone when last seen. Though we cannot at this stage rule out foul play. We do ask for any witnesses to please come forward. Any information is helpful. McIntyre was 62, just days away from the debut of her new line at London Fashion Week. Keep calm. Look good. Carry on. Her fans and friends gathered to share their grief. She was such an inspiration to so many young women across the world. A true genius. This is such a, a tragedy. A tragedy. McIntyre, a native of Glasgow, was a true rags to riches story. Her humble beginnings a testament to defying the odds. With over four decades of tremendous success as a designer in the highly competitive fashion industry. McIntyre had been in the news over the last year for her participation in a breakthrough genetic anti-aging treatment. The Waddington Institute in Cambridge has yet to offer any comment on this incident. We will continue to follow the story and bring any new details as they emerge. Well, so much for modern immortality. I don't like our chances of getting an interview with Waddington this week. Six months earlier, at a group therapy session at Waddington. Yes, there is so much anxiety we can feel, having so many hopes and expectations. Since this science is going to make such profound changes to your bodies and your minds, what improvements do you expect for this treatment to offer you? What positive change will it make in your lives? Ah, oh, the arthritis for one really makes everything so difficult. And I hope to lose these ugly gecks, you know, these big glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so that would help? Professionally? Oh, definitely. I mean, I hope so. I can't see a bloody thing without them. I have pairs scattered all over my flat. Well, Ava, you are among the youngest target ages considered for this trial. Did you have glasses when you were 18? Oh, 
no. My vision was perfect. And I had so many ideas all the time. I think that's what I hope for most of all. Ideas. New ideas. I feel almost as if I was robbed of my youth. Like I had my childhood ripped away. Got married at 18, got hooked on Oxy soon after. I really want to tap into that feeling again. Of being untarnished. With that feeling. Like I could do anything. Bob, you were going to add something? Well, of course. My main expectation is... To survive. This kind of cancer has never been treated successfully before, so that alone would be a miracle. How do you think it will affect your family and those you love? (laughs) I've already had to say goodbye (laughs) to my wife and daughter when I tempt myself with the thought of going home to them with a second chance at this life. Wow. Whew. What else? Well, to be able to see Whirling Dervish happen, to see my life's work come to life. That's your latest project with Hydrara? Yeah, I don't want to bore all you folks with my tech talk. Though, most of all, I'm hoping my life will improve, because with six extra years, I think I'll really have the chance to better know my youngest daughter, Virginia, and my wife, to get to be that much closer in age. How about you, Ava? How might this transformation positively affect those you love? I care what Bob's talking about. I have a 28-year-old supermodel for a bride. (laughs) To be able to move again and keep up with her, bro. (laughs) You mentioned having youthful ideas, Explain that more to me. How will that improve your life? I think it's really about getting rid of the scars, you know, the emotional ones. I'd love to experience my ideas of that time in my life without the chaos of Glasgow. Inject that mind into modern London at Fashion Week. Present day. Inside the House of Commons. Can I welcome all members of Parliament to the weekly questions to the Prime Minister? We shall begin this evening with a statement from the Prime Minister, the Honourable Clive Irvington. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I think I speak for a united House of Commons in sharing our great sadness in learning of the tragic death of Miss Ava McIntyre last night here in London. She was a treasure of Great Britain, a shining star representing uncanny creative pluck. A brilliant light and a spirit of art and innovation the world over. We understand the circumstances of her passing are still under investigation, but I'd like to offer our deepest condolences, our shared sorrow and prayers to her family and loved ones, and to the nation at large as we mourn her passing. Right then. Let us begin with Kendrick Lawton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I'd like to begin by seconding the Prime Minister's remarks concerning Ava McIntyre, It is a tragedy. I'm certain we can all agree on that. So I have heard some rumblings from the opposition already about this incident, and rumours have spread of possible questions emerging about it here tonight. It is my hope, and that of the Conservative Party, that we will all refrain from using this tragic incident as a means to make any political points regarding her death. My question for the Prime Minister is concerning the proposed tax increase on our international business segments, the overseas tax as it's called. Does the Prime Minister agree this would have a contrary effect on the growth of our industries and tax base? Well, first, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for raising that important notion. 
I also hope we can all share in that thought and respect the life and legacy of Miss McIntyre here today without any mention of it for political intrigue. And now to the question. Clearly, hamstringing our international business segments with an extra layer of taxation is amongst the worst ideas we've seen yet from the opposition. We need our businesses to expand in this new world economy, not be held down with punitive taxation. I doubt we'll find any cooperation from any segment of our coalition to support that effort. Ailey Stewart. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Contrary to the typical thoughts and prayers offered by our Conservative friends, we of the SNP would like to make it clear that losing one of Scotland's most treasured daughters to the highly paid human experimentation of the Waddington Institute in Cambridge requires anything but our silence now. What will the Prime Minister do to bring greater accountability to these rogue institutions that are funded by NIHR, yet answerable to no one? Will he impose greater scrutiny? I understand the shock and dismay this event has caused our Scottish members, the United Kingdom at large as well as everyone around the globe who was ever inspired by her many years of outstanding work. Again, I believe it is far too early to be making demands for change when we are unaware what the facts of this situation truly are. And I urge all members of this body to allow the investigation to be completed in its entirety before jumping to any conclusions about the cause of death or its implications on policy. And now, the Leader of the Opposition, Eamon Anderson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How convenient is it that at any moment the broken policies of the Tory government is brought to the fore, we are always asked for patience and silence. I second Mrs Stewart's concerns that the lack of regulations in health expenditures have plagued this body for years. We've asked before, and we'll ask again. What better time than now to fully scrutinise this wasteful spending? Certainly before it costs more lives. I think it's irresponsible for the Honourable Member to be making any accusations. If there's evidence of misappropriation, then it is incumbent upon the MP to bring it forth and make it known. More evidence. More evidence. The Labour Party has provided this body with years of evidence, stacks of it, and they've done nothing about it. And with all due respect to Ms Bowman, nothing has changed since she was appointed Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. Just more of the same, just now lying in pocketbooks instead of pockets. Order! There will be order! Quiet down now, the lot of you. The Prime Minister may opt to respond to Mr Anderson's comments, to which he shall make no more. Be seated, sir. I think I've addressed the question. Right. Kate Reardon. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I would like to make an official inquiry into the opposition's improper use of the Prime Minister's time. Particularly... Particularly for suggesting there had ever been any evidence of corruption produced against any official with NIHR or Mrs Bowman. Listen! Now hold on, all you bobbies. Perhaps you'll have your moment. Considering she has stood up, I think it would be right to recognise the Honourable Margaret Bowman to answer these charges. I agree, Mr Speaker. Margaret Bowman. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and you as well, Mr Prime Minister. I must agree, the comments of the opposition leader are both appalling and uncalled for. The last budget, which includes all expenditures within the purview of the NIHR, are documented in full and, like all others, have been approved by this House. 
suggesting that I, or anyone else, has received payment to look the other way with foreknowledge of wrongdoing is completely false. I think the Honourable Mr. Anderson should apologise for suggesting otherwise. I understand, Mr. Speaker. Our esteemed Prime Minister would rather be reading his collection of handed messages and I would expect nothing more from Ms. Bowman than her brand of feckless rhetoric. But I, we, will not be silent while certain corrupt members earn secretive kickbacks while our constituents are left to suffer the lack of funding for general care. Ava McIntyre is not an outlier of the bloated NIH bureaucracy. No. I say she's a victim of it as business as usual. We demand, demand an end to this corruption and a full investigation of the Waddington Institute to be started at once. Order! Order! There will be order in this house. I would like to say, and I will leave this issue here, I've met with both Scotland Yard as well as the Commissioner of Police of the Metropolis. I will await their full and detailed reports of their findings, but until then, I have no further comment on it. The angry MPs exchanged their barbs. The Prime Minister assured them that there would be a thorough investigation of the circumstances surrounding Ava's tragic death. Prime Minister Irvington held back their calls for an immediate investigation of NHIS funding to Waddington, winning the battle of that day. Though the opposition had achieved their aim, the international media was now consumed with questions about the Waddington Institute and what was really going on at their groundbreaking genetic research facility. The sphere of secrecy they had enjoyed for so long was now finally pierced. Two months earlier, Inside Ava McIntyre's spacious personal living quarters at the Waddington Institute. Oh, hello. Am I interrupting? Oh, not at all, Doctor. Please come in. Namaste. I'm just doing some yoga asanas. I see that. My. That's quite impressive. I... I can't believe how flexible I am now. I don't think I could ever really do this move quite right before now. Oh, it all feels so wonderful. Thank you, Risha. Really. Your physical response has been exceptional. Your body has responded perfectly to the treatment. Though, how are you feeling emotionally? Like I said, amazing. I'm tying so many things together, you know, all these feelings, things I've learnt over the years. They've all taken on a new kind of significance. Like when I'm doing yoga, I never thought before how truly important it is, tying into lifestyle and the female body. Well, we're only days away from your departure, and that will be the end of your post-treatment observation. How are you feeling about going back, getting back into your life? Risha, this is perfect. I feel incredible. All the ideas I hope for, I can't even contain them. Going to meet with my buyers next month, I think I'll overwhelm them with all the new ideas I have. This is truly a miracle. Do you have any fear? Or apprehension about returning home? You have been with us for nearly a year. I know. Seems like just yesterday that Monique mentioned what you folks were doing here. She heard about it from a plastic surgeon friend. We joked about how sexy I would be at her age. And now I'm ten years younger. So happy I took it seriously. Saw it through. I mean... I don't know who wouldn't want to have this. A brand new body. A new life. A chance to do it all over again. 
Can I show you a new idea I have? Of course. Here, this one. I'm calling it Carry On. It's basically three concentric circles. Each one represents a step in the spirit through human life. I've learnt about it in my yoga studies. This first one is called Karana. It represents where we start, the initial act of who we are in this life. This second circle represents the Sukshama, or the shell of our body and all the energy that keeps us alive. And this third circle, the Thula, all those things we can't see or feel, but are always there. Always being, always been. Carry on. It's beautiful. These layers are extraordinary in colour scheme. Almost reminiscent of an O'Keefe. Yes, very feminine indeed. <laughs> I'm imagining a complementary colour layer extending outwards for each layer. And then here, rolled in for a coloured sand-like pattern. I think it would be such a great look. Wow! Ava, these are extraordinary. I see you've been drawing quite a bit. Dr. Van der Vloos tells me the arthritis in your wrists has vanished. I, my hands are like new. I can't remember wanting to draw so much since I was a kid. Well, Ava, I wanted to speak with you because I've spoken with Dr. Merrick about your ongoing prescribed medications. Oh, no. I don't want to back on all that. Please, Risha, I don't want that. Don't need it. Don't listen to her. You and Waddington have given me everything I asked for. Well, I did promise her that you would arrange a follow-up. Go see her as soon as you get settled. At least let her evaluate your current state. Oh, yeah. Not to worry, Risha. Dr. Fakori. I'm sure Monique will insist upon it. If I'm not seeing someone, then she'll insist on taking over as my head shrinker. <laughs> the fire was lit, and the young mind returned home. Though this time, home wasn't Glasgow, but Chelsea on Thames, to a completely secure life. The kind usually reserved for elite retirees, and those whose best industry lay behind them. Yet, as teenaged Ava's mind further took hold, she was returned to a life she would soon unrecognize. For there was no mum, troubled as she was, or Danny Blaine, the boy she fell so madly in love with, only to lead her astray. Now, she was truly alone, inserted quite suddenly into a foreign world of fame and fortune, surrounded by loved ones who would all soon become strangers.